started just to keep the ball rolling on the um, on the, the schedule here. Uh, this is a pretty cool session. Um, uh, I'm going to introduce Rodrigo from Decifra. Rodrigo is the uh, CDO and founder uh, at Decifra, but I'm not, uh, like earlier, I don't want to start talking and, and <laughs> steal the thunder and, and conflict. So right. over to you. Thank you. Uh, hi, just uh, so quickly, I'm Rodrigo, as has been said. Um, I was an economist at the Mexican Central Bank, and then I made a master's in data science and made a lot of Coursera courses, and then I switched my career to data science and mining and such. So just before starting, like, uh, on a quick, like, hands up, who, who considers themselves like a data scientist or such, just to make sure that... Okay, that's good. <laughs> okay, excellent. Um, so just, like, a, a quick warning before, before starting is, um, even though the words that describe the conference are say things like complex modeling and such, uh, this is more like food for thought, and I'm gonna like go through some examples of what we have done and what our process is like, and not something like just diving into a convolutional neural network and all this kind of fancy stuff that everyone has wanted to do. That's not what you're gonna find here. So, um, and the last thing is w when you like read definitions of data science and such online, you you frequently find. Uh, the combination of statistics, computing, and uh, mining, big data, all these big words. Um, but I think something is lacking in that definition, and that is that the ultimate goal of a data scientist should be to design a, a data product or something that can be used uh, after making an analysis. It's not like taking a radiography and saying, oh, the bone is broken. It's like we, we should be designing things that are continually helpful to people who make decisions, right? So. Um, just uh, the Cifra is a company we founded uh, five years ago, well, six years ago now. And uh, we developed uh, geo location or location intelligence solutions on, on top of Cardo, you could say it like that. So we use Cardo as our back end or our way of showing our clients the results. But what we do is predictive modeling and machine learning on top of location, basically. Um, so before, like everyone wants just to build a very complex algorithm, but what is really important to to get an insight according to what we have learned for five, for five or six years doing this is um, we came up with this kind of wheel that explains the process, which is uh, before just trying to go into the data and doing tons of stuff, you should just think about the questions very carefully and, and understanding the needs of the client or the or the party interested, because it, uh, the client could be a government or a, a private business. So uh, making a very good question and then and putting it um, in terms of a working area in a map, right? that makes a lot of sense, because you want to understand what's the level of data you want to have in terms of granularity. Then um, working to join the information. I, I just put like a couple examples of the usual that we use uh, for our analysis at the CIFRA. But, um, like I, I here, like the takeaway for data is what people don't realize when they start doing maps is that the great advantage of doing things with geo tags and, 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 and location data is that you can actually make apples talk with oranges and pears, right? Because they are sharing literally the same location even though they are very different things. And that allows for very complex combinations of things before even going into modeling, right? So uh, that would be like the second step. The third step is Mm, again, before jumping into mining and such, is you can think of, as, of easy ways to aggregate data, to generate um, personalized indicators or things that are not very complex. They just, I mean, w if you have a really good Cloudflare map, you can solve a very complex problem. Um, if you have gone through that process and then you want to go into big data analysis, machine learning, and, stu and stuff, um, making sure that your data extraction is something you can replicate. And then, after you have done a really beautiful model, then you can think of putting it in a platform or something that a final user can consume to answer questions. Because if not, the process is not worth it at all. Like uh, Going through all the, like, the hard work of, of collecting the data and putting, sorting it, uh, tuning a model for hours of computing, and uh, not making it work in real life is like totally worthless. So, um, with that in mind, I want to share like four uh, use cases we've had and how we we have solved them. So, um, we have companies. Our company is based in Mexico. I probably skipped that part. In Mexico, we have a lot of companies from uh, the U.S. and from Europe coming to 
to locate. And usually the first question they come up is like, we need a very sophisticated system to decide what street is the best street. And most commonly, that is not the question they want to ask. Uh, they probably want to ask, like, how many stores should I be thinking of in Mexico, or what states of Mexico, what cities of Mexico should I be thinking of? So, and, and you can actually solve that with very aggregate stats and very basic statistics, and let the data speak. You don't need to do a very complex modeling to solve that. Uh, it could be something like, I don't know, you, suppose you, you, your customers are of a certain segment, just look for the city that has most of those, and then try to measure how, mu how many stores you will need. Something like that. Uh, another example, and, and this example is very meaningful to me because uh, when we started the company, we created a product that was meant to be consumed by small and medium enterprises, and we failed miserably. Uh, we almost went bankrupt because small and medium enterprises did not, did not know what to do when they saw the map. We, we created beautiful visualizations and a lot of statistics, and they didn't do anything with it. And we were about to go bankrupt when a bank called, and they say, like, hey, we just got money, we need to open I think it was like 500 ATMs in the next month, and we do not even know where to start looking. Um, so what we did was, uh, we didn't have any kind of information, but we figured out a way to get how much other actual ATMs of the competitors were making money, and how much money they were uh, issuing and such. And we aggregated them into street levels. So we classified all the streets in the country according to how much business they had in the banking sector, and we solved the problem for uh, like a million, I don't know, they had somewhere like 300 million to spend. And we solved it with just a, a, a vector and an aggregation, which is really all you need. Another thing is uh, two partners came and they, they were the owners of a gym. And one of them said they needed to place billboards in Mexico City. And the other one said they needed to put it in a different city. Uh, and they contacted us because they said that like, probably a map can solve that. What we did, we was collected uh, GPS data from cars and tried to track what, what the people that were going to the gym, where they lived and where they worked. And we figured out that 40% of them were living in a different city. But there wasn't a, that wasn't a good enough explanation. Like these guys said, okay, but I don't care if the, the other 60% is a better customer, why, would I, why should I be spending into like just a lot of money to put that advertisement in a city which, which doesn't bring the customer I want. So we predicted what is missing, which is how much income they had. So we trained models with uh, available like survey data on how much people earn, and then we made that into the block levels of the people that were coming to the gym. Um, it turned out that the people from the small city were like the business owners of an industrial zone in the Mexico city, and like the sweet spot for that was just going to the rich people from another city and they will bring the better business. And we saw that with a map. Um, and like the other takeaway is these guys were fighting uh, over something that is like th these guys just had different hypotheses and using maps and aggregating that in that way could solve the problem very easily. Um, the other case is a customer of ours wanted to open 2,000 different stores in the same year. And they, had a, uh, they wanted to do machine learning and location analysis with this. So the problem was not making a model that could predict sales. That's like a, once you figure out a way how to, again, to other, the thing I've been saying over again is once you figure out how to aggregate the data, it's not a problem to, to tune a really good model. The problem is making that work for the 150,000, uh, 150 people that were looking for a new location every day. So we had to put, like, on top of Cardo, we built uh, a module that you didn't know. I mean, the user didn't need to know anything. They just needed to go to a place, find an address in which an, uh, a new local was available, press a button, get a prediction, and the, and the business case with that and the underlying data was sent to a manager who could say yes or no. And um, that's the, like, like the, the most important thing I want to say is uh, this is the way of thinking of when you do a map or when you do any type of analysis, you should be thinking of the final user's need. It, it doesn't work if, if you're doing something very complex that nobody can understand that, or, or that in practice is very difficult to apply. So probably just a huge button that 
I don't know. You, you could make an app for uh, for the for your iWatch that turns green if it's going to be okay and red if it's not going to be okay. It doesn't matter. What matters is that it helps the business user make a decision, right? And that's about data product thinking. So as long as you are creating data pipelines, um, it it is going to be better for the business user. 